Patients with early esophageal cancers have the most options for treatment, including surgery, endoscopic treatment, and radiation treatment. Usually this stage of cancer is picked up early during screening of Barrett's esophagus and is only confined to the lining of the esophagus, which is considered very early esophageal cancer. Let's look at the options for this. Surgery has been the primary treatment strategy for early esophageal cancers because it, the likelihood of cure is very high with surgery alone. The operation involves removal of most of the esophagus and the upper half of the stomach. Once the esophagus is removed, a new esophagus is created out of the remaining stomach and joined to the remaining esophagus in the neck. Usually this is performed using one incision in your abdomen and one on the left side of your neck, or it can be performed with the laparoscope with even smaller incisions. One of the variations surgeons at Swedish perform is the vagal sparing esophagectomy. The incisions are the same, but the surgeons will attempt to preserve the large vagal nerves which are nearby the esophagus and allow the new stomach tube to function more normally to increase the blood supply to the new esophagus and to reduce the stress on the patient. Surgical resection which is partial or complete removal of the esophagus is also called esophagectomy. This is the gold standard for care of esophageal cancer and there are a lot of different types of esophagectomy which range from minimally invasive to big open surgery involving a neck incision, a chest incision, and a belly incision. The decision about which specific type of surgery you will get is a discussion you have to have with your surgeon and depends on your specific cancer as well as your individual wishes. One of the emerging techniques used for very early esophageal cancers is to use endoscopic treatment. This strategy uses two technologies together to eliminate the cancer from the patient. For areas in the esophagus that are elevated or look bumpy, an endoscopic mucosal resection can be performed using the endoscope and a unique attachment that removes a disc of tissue. This can be done as an outpatient and allows the patient to go home shortly after the procedure. This treatment is often combined with another treatment which is called radiofrequency ablation or BARX. Radiofrequency ablation heats the esophagus to a certain temperature to burn the cancer cells and allow for renewal of normal esophageal lining cells. This option preserves the whole esophagus while still treating the cancer. Only about one in six or one in seven patients evaluated for this type of treatment would actually qualify for this option. Because it is a brand new treatment strategy, very little is known about the long-term follow-up, but the early results of these techniques are very promising. When your cancer is more advanced but is not spread out the outside the esophagus or the area close to the cancer, the treatment often requires a combination of chemotherapy, radiation, and esophagectomy. At Swedish, this strategy is used when the cancer is grown through the wall of the esophagus or there is evidence that it is spread to the lymph nodes around the cancer. Your care will involve a medical oncologist who provides the chemotherapy, a radiation oncologist who provides the radiation, these treatments are usually given together to take advantage of their combined effects to attempt to kill cancer cells. These treatments usually last about six to eight weeks. After that, you will be reevaluated by your team of physicians to determine if you are ready to proceed with surgery to remove your esophagus. Treatment for patients who have metastatic cancers, those that have spread outside the main organ, is directed at making you feel comfortable and improving your quality of life. One of the most common symptoms at this stage is difficulty swallowing, so treatment is aimed at trying to improve the swallowing of the patient. Placement of an endoscopic stent, which physically holds open the esophagus, is one option to make swallowing easier. Often, chemotherapy or radiation therapy are used to help improve swallowing ability in conjunction with the stent. One of the most common questions patients have is how they will eat if the esophagus is removed. After removal of the esophagus and the top portion of the stomach, most patients will have a new esophagus created out of their stomach. Using surgical staplers, we can construct a tube out of the stomach that resembles the esophagus. This gastric tube, or pull-up as it is called, is brought up in the same place as your normal esophagus and joined to the part of the esophagus that has not been removed. If you've had previous stomach surgery or the stomach is not usable because your cancer is very large, we may recommend that 
we use a section of your colon or large bowel or a small piece of intestine to reconnect you and allow you to eat. Your ability to eat after surgery will feel different at first. It takes about two months to get used to eating with the new esophagus. But over time, most patients can eat an unrestricted diet that is only limited by the size of the portions. Often we recommend that patients eat four to six smaller meals a day, which generally allows them to be healthy and maintain their weight. Catching esophageal cancer early greatly increases the chance of cure, though it does not always guarantee it. If the cancer is caught early, the likelihood of cure is 90% or greater. In locally advanced cancers, the likelihood of surviving five years is probably around 50% with aggressive treatment, including surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. With late stage cancers, going without treatment usually means the patient will die within 12 to 18 months. The overall quality of life after treatment is generally good. Swallowing is best improved with esophagectomy. Taking out the cancer makes your swallowing better than any other treatment and preserves swallowing ability long term. The biggest day-to-day -day changes after treatment are that you need to sleep with your head elevated and that you must eat small meals, but those are pretty standard, minimal changes. In conclusion, at Swedish, esophageal cancer is generally managed by multiple physicians. We feel that this allows us to provide individual specialty care to achieve the best outcomes for you. For more information, please refer to our website. We can be found at www.swedishthoracicsurgery.org. On behalf of the entire thoracic surgery team here at Swedish Medical Center, thank you so much for listening to our podcast, Introduction to Esophageal Cancer.